We're on the way. It's phase on the T side, and they're going straight to work. Yeah, this is really fast paced. They want to set the tone right at the start. Rain with one. Glaive's got to hold on, and he's hitting some very nice shots, staying alive as long as possible into this three on three. And now they have control of the bomb site. We've still got the swing factor of Nico coming late in through drop. I think Kiebi might have heard the steps. And it slows down. Bomb planted. Device nearly one HP. Kiebi still sits pretty, but not for long. Alu is there, and Alu's there again. Four kills for Alu in this round. That's what a so. Start for him. Yeah, that is so sick. They need guys like Alu, and they need guys like Kiyoshima to have an another stellar series here against Astralis. It, th this matchup is so funny on Cobblestone. The big thing is talking to both of these teams like before before today began. Astralis believes completely that they have phase trumped with this pick of Cobble. They're so excited to, to be playing on Cobble a second time. They, they think they're the better team. They think this was a trap for FaZe. And FaZe, I mean, Kerrigan just came up to the desk in front of us and just, you know, said, yep, they fell right into our trap. We get to play Cobblestone again. And look at this, another rush towards this B bomb site. FaZe not slowing down whatsoever. Glaive's going to slow things down for now. They're going to do it for him. Actually, everyone's alive. This is now really dicey for FaZe. They're stuck. Yeah, look at the HP. Rain's pretty low. Now, Glaive can't hold up against the UMPs. They're breaking through. Now, Kievi, Dupree, and Device. They got to dig deep trying to keep this one together because FaZe, they want to take all of this. Device finds Kyo, and they're slowly trying to push towards site. Nico breaks through by drop again. A bit of a rinse and repeat here from before. It's not Alu this time, it's Nico at the helm. And it's all on Dupree. A 1v3 sits in front of him, and it's not looking too likely with the bomb down. And already two challenges are rising. That's so sick. This is why they have Nico in the team. This is why he's considered such a huge talent, a massive star. When they get stuck on that platform, it's him who comes in to bail, the, uh, bail them out, save the day, really, the last player in that rush. And he's the first one who comes down broken while with two quick kills, gets four completely in the round and ensures that FaZe can continue moving forward. So 2-0, and this time Astralis has nothing in the round. You've got to wonder how much time FaZe spent pouring over the demos from the group stage, reviewing what went wrong on this very map. Well, that was the thing in the interview. Kerrigan just basically said, yeah, once it got to 12-6 and we were on the T side, I just didn't show anything that we'd prepared. He, he said, I just kind of let us lose at that point because it is the group stage. Confident that we're still going to make the playoffs. Why show anything to this team that we might very well want to play on this map again later on in the tournament? And I mean, this is where we get to see what they actually have. This is where they have to show us what they've prepared. Kerrigan, a risky in-game leader, but it might work out here. Blade, big deny. Alu, that's a bit awkward, turns around. Side swipes down Glaive, an easy one in the end. It made it look a little trickier than I thought, but no. FaZe keeping it clean for the first three. And Astralis not yet to re up the fight, but this is the round where it all begins. This is what's so funny, is you can, you can theorize on what FaZe has prepared, what, you know, how they're going to change things, or like what they could do against Astralis. And basically, these first three rounds have just been rushes towards the B-bomb site. They just want to get in, they want to get into the action, and it's working so far. Kiyoshima's going to keep the MAC-10, Alu's going to keep the UMP, so he's the opper. And I mean, this, this, that just lends to you to believe that it's going to be a little bit more fast-paced again when you have these two SMGs, keep them moving. It's going to be light utility for the Astralis side, so there'll be plenty of opportunities to be aggressive. It's Kiyo being first man in at the point. Rain, Alu behind, and he is going straight through, but it's Glaive! Not that much stopping power, it's the MAC-10 to take him down, that's a bit of a tragedy! As Astralis now have to try and recover, and they are in a 4v4, but against a T-side with the same number of players, it's still pretty darn tricky. Running down the counter utility from Astralis as well. There's only one flashbang left on a pre Molotovs around. Still smokes in the hands of FaZe. They're waiting patiently, trying to figure out where everything is. They know Zipnix is in the site. Kirby around the rock. He's trying to find something, and it's going to be Zipnix who's not brought down. Kirby bails him out, and a second kill. That's from Zipnix. That's a huge play. This defense holds strong. They finally held off. Faze trying to hit into a site, but there's still Nico and there's still damage. That's one. He's got 79 HP. There's a shot in this. I would never write this man out. But I'm not too far either. Zipnix on 2 HP. What will he do now? Important thing right now at the moment for Nico is kills. Get at least one to two more kills. Keep the economy low. Force a lot of rebuys. Force the drops. And you can see with all the time, he's just being patient. Wants to see if anyone from Astralis is going to make a mistake. They might consider rotations, they might consider drop, they just add that little seed of doubt. It might be enough, Nico gonna spot an arm there. Not enough to get the kill. Dupree backs away, but now the alarm bells start ringing. Nico, every step he takes, gets more dangerous! It's a 1v2! But would you predict it? Oh, Dupree denies it, smart play, but a risky one in the end. He does recover the AWP and keeps things stable for Astralis. Yeah, smart and risky is exactly that from Dupree. The repositioning behind the rock where Device had just fallen. He exposes himself out in the open if Nico had kept swinging wide, but obviously Nico's never going to expect a second player to be there, and a great shot from Dupree. Not as damaging as it could have been. Remember, Zipnix was low as well on the site, so if Dupree falls there, that, that feels like Nico's just going to win that one. 
back and we go. FaZe, of course, kept those MAC-10s. They kept the money pretty robust throughout this one so far. They've still got a good buy here. Alu as well with the AWP. A nice addition, but Keo, he's going running. What the hell? How did he make it up that far? Blade just find him, and he's not going to move either. Keo wants to keep this all for himself, but Keo is there in support, but gets overwhelmed by Nico coming through drop, and it's down to this 2v2, but we do have the AWP on device trying to play back into this. But Nico wants to turn things around for himself. It's again, yeah, it's going to be slowed down one more time. The bomb site is lost, but actually Alu's very, very slow and actually moving into it, knowing the AWP is more than likely going to be peeking through those double doors. It's all down to Nico to cover him, but a flank is coming in as well. That's going to be the tough part for Nico. It's all going to be down to timing, and I think it's in Dupree's side. Oh, just barely not, but now he has the knowledge. Alu's getting the plant down. And where does Nico position himself from here? He's got to be so careful. These after plant positions are paramount. <sighs> <laughs> Nico, if only you knew. But timing of that nade disguised the drop. They don't know Dupree is down there, but it doesn't matter. It seems that Alu already finding one. Dupree now gives away the position. There's no 1v2, and it might be time to back away. Try and get the AWP and run, Dupree, run! Nico's not going to let you. It's FaZe striking straight back here. Blow for blow so far in the gun rounds, at least. And that is going to push Astralis back to the Stone Age. And the timing was not with Dupree. He got the information, but Nico never came back to face. And this is now, this is a scary Nico as well. A couple of rounds now, you can feel he's really, really tuned in on this game. He's going to be a force. The hard reset coming in, but Astralis is going to buy right through it. The pistols are up, KRB with the UMP, but they've got to figure out this B bomb site. They have been pressured over on that side of the map every single round, and they've barely been able to contain it. Yeah, always tough when you, you look at face on paper, it's always going to be tough. They have so much raw firepower they can throw into these sites. You just kind of expect them to trade favorably, but Carrigan's going straight in here towards drop. Yeah, me though. Waiting with the UMP. Strikes first. A lot of aggression from the initial players in these attacks from FaZe. A lot of times it's been Kiyoshima jumping off that broken wall. That time Kerrigan, just for the MAC-10, just seeing what he can find. Question is, what do they gain from it? There it is. They gain a kill. Glaive is mollied out. That's really, really nice focus from FaZe, making sure they clear every corner. As it mixes the next point of danger for the FaZe guys. Yeah, Kia already finding the flame to drop, just kind of removes all the stability from that B-side. Zipnik's now out in the open, still gonna find one, but one is not enough here. And Dupree was over by A this entire time with that Deagle and armor. Now, it seems a little bit impossible by this point. Well, at the very least, we can say one thing that, that FaZe has prepared for this map is they have the Molotovs down. I mean, they just slowly take control of that B platform. Molotov out the cubby, Glaive gets picked off. Molly out the stairs before you commit to the bomb site, and Zipnix is forced into the open. Even though he gets a kill, it just doesn't matter at that point. It's been a very, very strong T side for FaZe. Six rounds now, they have gone towards this B bomb site. You can see Nico smiling as well. It, it's scary when FaZe, because the thing is that I know a lot of people who've been, you know, maybe watching FaZe throughout the group stage, they're just having fun. They're just, you know, super lighthearted, always kind of you know, building off each other. And if they're just enjoying themselves and running through Astralis in a semi final, you think, how do you stop someone like Nico going off? How do you stop Alu going off? It's, it almost feels impossible. And we know that Astralis found this hard against SK to, to try and get around that fallen element with that additional orb that came through, but still, they're going to have to come up with a plan soon to try and quell that attack that FaZe have been bringing towards B. And the tough part is, I mean, they've actually done a pretty decent job, all things considered. They really haven't had a round where they've had all the utility that they could possibly like to hold it off, you know, for more than 45 seconds, more than that initial throw of a smoke and Molotov. I mean, they just haven't had the economy to do that, but still they've brought some of those into two-on-twos and in very close clutch situations, they just haven't been able to win them out. And again, it's looking like it's going to be a massive play towards this B bomb site from FaZe. The question becomes that when the gun round comes in, do they just throw more bodies for the defense at the B site or do they try and get aggressive over towards A, try and get a quick flank coming in? And then it's down to FaZe. Do they switch up that one time? Do they go, all right, screw it, let's go A. It's ball is in their core, but Kierby is doing some real damage through drop at the moment. It may be a one-for-one one at this point, but anything's a benefit. They got himself an AK. Glaive finds Nico. What is happening here? We're down to a 3v2, and Glaive again tries to take the fight, but now Rain is fully switched on and well aware of what's happening here. Kierby is the one guy who can try and deny what FaZe are building here, and it's not looking all that good. Alan goes down. No! It's down to the 1v1. No armor on Kierby. Rain on 37 HP. It's all aim. It's all guts. It's all glory. And one minute to play this out. Bomb next to Kierby. Rain knows he has to take this fight. Both players missing. It's vital. Molly goes in. Tag off oh, for Kierby. He gets the job done. No armor. Just sheer raw firepower. What sick composure from Kierby in that round. You can see he doesn't want to commit to any of those fights. He's got no armor. Any of the bullets that come out from Rain is, is really going to mess with his aim in that situation. So he has to find 
the perfect fight to take, and eventually he does get it. Care be outlasting rain there, that's huge. Also, I mean, the big thing is that that's a round where they only had pistols, so a blunder there from FaZe, and that's going to put their economy a little bit low. That's going to put them on the edge. Very, very small uh, tech pause, but it's, we're back into the action now. Well, I think Astralis might have just followed up with an actual tactical one for themselves. I so. mean, this is smart, because this is, this is essentially a, a really big portion of the half, because they just win a round. Their economy is, is they have four players below $1,000, so if they lose this one, it's right back into that double reset territory. This is the round that can establish if moving forward, they'll be able to have a decent, decent guns and decent utility. This is the best round they've had in terms of their arsenal. So if you're phased, though, do you just throw a curveball at them? You've just been pounding B the whole time. Yeah, so that's just switch up and go away. That's the question because they have they have by with so much success at B early on in this match, they've set it up perfectly to throw some kind of a fake, right? Because Astralis, once those nades are coming out from phase towards the B bomb site, they're gonna be very, very worried since they haven't been able to handle it very well for five, six rounds in a row. So the fake at some point is going to come out. The question is does Kerrigan go with it here? We're gonna see what he calls coming out of this one. Again, Astralis, it looked like they started to do kind of a four one look for a little while, trying to you know, really be able to handle that B presence, but we're back into this now. And this is already a different look. You can see it from the start. Three towards A, two, one, I guess towards drop and device almost there. And Astralis actually one step ahead. That's a great peek from device over that smoke to just see if bodies are going towards the A bomb site. He gets the information, and Astralis already has three players here. This is the battle. This is for the round of rain. Just eliminates the free. Goes for more, and he's going to get it. Kirby can't handle it. There's the third player. They all miss. Raid is unstoppable. He might not stop now. Zimnix could be the next possible victim here. He's trying to get round. He's trying to be relevant. But Rain's not having any of it. That's four. He comes alive when it matters the most. And again, Astralis will be left shattered after this round. That is so crushing if you're Astralis. Mentally as well, you have the perfect call. You have the perfect setup. Three players in A-Halls, and it's one man, just Rain, who eliminates all of them. What a round. And it's always been the danger with this phase team. You always question, what happens when one of the players turns up, two of the players turn up? We've had three so far. And Glaive is trying to find his way out of this, but too many men surround him. And that round meant a lot to phase. Yeah, that's huge. Look at this money on the Estrella side of things. That is so brutal for them. It's going to be another round that you have to imagine. And, and just look at this. First headshot, this is the one that really confuses you. That Molotov is perfect. It actually isolates Rain. His only option is to go forward. And to see someone like Device, Sponge said it in the pregame. I mean, just on the fact of how consistent he is at landing shots and how consistent he is among series and among maps, you can consider him the best player in the world. But, it, I mean, that is just a, a routine miss that he makes there. And now, they can go right back towards B. Why not just go right back to what was working before? Nico doesn't even see him. Getting Zipnix down to 17 HP is absolutely devastating now. They hold phase, they've got the utility, they can just wait this out, they can molly out any area they need to. The device is just swing factor as is Kiev. Be patient as well, they know if there's a buy it's just gonna be pistol armor, so... Running down the clock is a friend of phase here because the more they pressure, the more utility is gonna come out for the Astral side of things, so... Easier to take those ranged duels with AKs against pistols when there's no smokes in the way. And at the moment, they've slowed everything down, considering a rotation back towards the A bomb site. Nico is alone in drop. This is lovely. Pulling four players over to me, and I think Astralis are getting an idea of what's happening here. You can see them slowly swinging back over Zimnix and, and Kiebi and Device, all considering Dupree might be hearing steps. He might not be. It might just be a read on the timing here. Yeah, I think this is just a read from Astralis. It's also a gamble, knowing they have to do something. There's Dupree, spots one. Kiyoshima gets into some cover. Gonna take the fight still. If Dupree walks right into it, Zipnix out in the open, he gets dropped. Device, though. This could throw a real problem towards FaZe. Will they expect it? Will they deal with... Ooh, a one-for-one -one trade is good. That's fine. That's more than you're happy with. Now, Kiebi's left in that kind of decisive moment of, what do I do? Oh, my God, Kyo! Right through the door. <laughs> we'll find him anyway. It feels like nothing works in their favor here. Yeah, this is going so well. At the moment, it's looking like FaZe were correct. They were the ones who set the trap for Astralis, and they've fallen right into it. Glaive, the only one left, he's sandwiched. That kill might not matter. Nico's still at the B site, but that's huge. Really great awareness from Glaive, and he's going to get out. He's going to survive with the AK-47. It'll be likely the only weapon they have into the next round, but at least it's something you can work with. The money has been absolutely distraught for Astralis, yet to feel like they can actually make that fight. The, the imperative rounds. Phase have just seemed to have such an advantage, even in the mental game.
They came into it doing those system B hits that worked and worked and worked. And then that A hit comes through and it was rain right at the helm of that. And it just worked out so perfectly for them. Yeah, great individual efforts from, from FaZe in all the important rounds, right? All the rounds that Astralis has something, the first chances they get to build and string rounds together, FaZe just shuts them right down. Mm. Well, so far we've seen Alu have his moment, we've seen Rain, and we've seen Nico. Let's see what Keo and Carrigan could do. Why not? They're going to have a lovely time in this round. You've only got Glaive with the rifle. P250 or two as well, spread apart, but not too much to write home about at this point. And Astralis just having to maybe consider options of what they do in the next round here. That's the tough part because, I mean, actually, just the previous round they lost. They had the right read. They had the right play called for it. They were ready for everything. This is interesting. If FaZe is going to keep fighting, they, they've got to know this is the only rifle in the hands of Astralis yet. They still keep a couple bodies there to take this duel. Glaive brought down pretty low, down to 32. Does he go for more? He does. And Alu finds him with that AWP. And this is going to let Keo swing a little bit wider. Yeah, Keo slowly but surely. Taking over that B side, you can see Astralis trying to play back into it, but by now, Keo's looking hungry. He wants a couple of kills here. There's three players just peeking out him, but he can't find one cleanly, and they're all getting tagged up very lightly there. We go finding a connection, and a follow-up to Keo. Clean kills coming in, nice and easily done. He loves that, and this is the thing. Because of because Astralis doesn't have a whole lot of nades, FaZe is establishing control of that platform very early on in these rounds, and, that, and that's giving them so long to just kind of take those fights to where they don't have to commit to anything. Astralis doesn't have, like, the HE grenades to lob in to get some extra chip damage. They don't have the Molotovs to force those players out into the open, so it's just a lot of dueling for the FaZe guys, and that's what they want. That's what they're thriving on at the moment. And then you throw your mind back to the fact that Alu got, what, I think four kills in that first round? Right. How massive was that impact that he had to allow them to get to this point, to, you know, push down Astralis so hard that they barely had the money, and they built so so well off the back of it now. Really, really beautiful stuff from FaZe. This is a T-side that I don't think many of us expected to see. I, I don't think Cobble was ever be considered at the start of this event, and then the group stage happened, and now you're seeing that truly mental game coming through to a very end. This isn't even anything necessarily that tactical. This no. is just kind of sheer brute force of just saying, we are going to dominate this B-bomb site. We are going to require you to put so much attention on it, and then we'll have the entirety of the map open to us whenever we want to go towards A. And I mean, at the moment, they, they really don't even have necessarily any, any reason to. No, nope, absolutely nothing. It does look like, again, coming out of the pause now, we are back live into this one. If we can get in game. The, I mean, this is the same setup that Astralis ran out of the last time out. Two players, to pre and Device over. The, the one thing they're missing is, is Kirby, that extra player. So, yeah, it is going to be taking over. There's Dupree with the first kill. Rain's not going to be able to find Device. Kiyoshima's here. They know where Dupree is. He's out of bullets as well. There's no getting away from that. Quick rotation from Kirby, though, and, a, and FaZe can slow things down. But look how imperative Nico's position could just about be. Now, I'm not sure if he's going to make noise or try and make a play happen anytime soon. But if he came through on drop, then he could have maybe caught Zipnix or Glaive in the heels and completely opened up that A side. But no, there's caution amongst the FaZe side. Yeah, Nico's timing is going to be critically important. With all the nades being used over towards the A site, though, I mean, look at, look at the lean and that footstep that Nico makes as he... Drops is actually going to pull Glaive away as well. This is exactly what phase one. Nico just needs one kill. He's such a powerhouse player. Already predicting Zipnik's position. But Glaive will be close by to trade it, but the bomb's not even here. He's just doing this all alone. He's keeping two players busy. And they're just depending on Kievi playing over by cannons at an incredibly passive angle to work out. And he can isolate those two players off as well. Nico's got these these players over at the B-bomb site, so mind game at the moment. Now it is Zipnix he's doing with this is great position. Nico was probably not going to expect it, but he wins it. That's dirty, and there's Kiyoshima. Nico's done it all for FaZe. He's frozen two players and even adds a kill onto it. That's huge. Glaive's just got to be desperate at this point. Made it through, and I don't think they spotted him first, but now they certainly know where he is, and it's Alu keeping eyes towards him. Bomb is going down in the safe hands of Kiyoshima, but Glaive surrounded on all fronts. Pick your poison, Nico to the right, Kyo to the left, Nalu not too far behind. Glaive finds the first challenges and rises to the occasion, but there's not much more to be seen other than that, surely. Yeah, it's a hollow victory, isn't it? I mean, he's basically just won one fight to be able to run away, and at this point, he might just feel like he has to go for it. No kit in the hands of the bomb is ticking down even lower. I think Alu might have spotted him there, but he's still playing it cautiously, and it's Kiyoshima this time. Four kills. This is a very well-spread affair from FaZe in terms of who's stepping up. Every single one of these big rounds, we've seen one of these players getting four kills, and every time it's someone different so far. What a powerhouse from FaZe. And you have to say, that round is a perfect display of why Nico is such a valuable addition to this team and why Nico has been considered one of the best players in the world for some time now. It's not just the aim that he obviously displayed in winning that fight with Zipnix, but it's the game sense. It's the fact that he knows he can just be a little bit patient, that his presence there is more important than any kill he can get. 
he was absolutely outstanding. And FaZe again going back to the B hits that worked so perfectly at the beginning of this one. FaZe looking a little surrounded. Kyo this time. He has to clean up so easy, but he does. Do oh, hello! Device of Kyo going to be doing some work here, but the sustain, I don't know if it's going to be there. Nico and Ali want to keep this one back on track for FaZe. They don't let this slip again. Oh my god, the damage though! Zipnix comes into it! And Alu from above will find Zipnix, but now it's a 1v2. No armor on the CT side. It's got to sit in Alu's hand, surely, but they're going to try and make a play out of this. They're going to boost him up. This is brave as you like. Alu, are you ready for this? No! Device catches him! Completely unawares. Astralis recover the round. This is the second time they've done this. It's surprising these are the rounds they're winning. Yeah, I mean, that, that time, I mean, that's that's the one issue, right? This time there's Deagles out in the field for Astralis. And this is, I mean, they've got to feel so very fortunate at the moment, though, that they even have three rounds. Two of them have been rounds they've won with pistols. That time, at least, they upgrade the previous one with USPs. But they're kind of catching on to this this heavy B play, very fast B play. That time they had a Molotov that was thrown out. You could see Nico and Alu couldn't get back into the cover of the box. And again, no. Rain going to find Device. And Alu straight through smoke. Phase, it's all going your way. You don't even need to see them at the moment. Feeling out the game so well. Barely any damage taken as well from FaZe. Massive blunder from Astralis. Five on three, and yeah, FaZe just have the entirety of the map to do whatever they please. Two members of Astralis over towards the A-bomb site. It's just Glaive here at B, and when does, this, or when does FaZe choose to pounce? I just think they hadn't even really committed anywhere. Kyo's just gonna take the fight now towards Glaive, spots him out towards the statue. There is no one else here, bearing in mind. If Glaive feels too much pressure, this could be all but done, but a great adjustment from him. Gonna catch Kyo out, and Alu just about cut off by that molly. Goes in, perfect adjustment. And Kiebi and Dupree gonna have to try and play back into this one, but bearing in mind the bomb's not even fully on the site yet. They are gonna find one, though. The Finn falls, and we're down to a 3v2. Yeah, phase at the moment not utilizing the player advantage they have, and actually look at this rain. Well, I think the shadow's been spotted. No, Dupree didn't see it. From our view, it looked like it, but either way, Kirby, Nico's got to know his position, and he's going to win that fight with ease. Another reset for the Astralis guys. They have not been able to string two together. At this point, though, considering they won a round with upgraded pistols, they have two players who can get rifles. They may just have to go for it. They may just say, we're desperate at this point. Yeah, absolutely. FaZe, very much in control so far. 10 to 3 scoreline. You didn't expect this after the group stage games, but I guess they stay true to their word. You almost feel bad on that last round because Glaive actually makes a really, really sick play. The Molotov towards the entrance, uh, towards platform of B, isolates one player and he repositions and gets a position that Kiyoshima was, was not prepared for. I mean, that, that's a pretty sick thing to do when you're one player defending a site against potentially five. Well, Glaive's actually been pretty much outstanding so far. One of the only players to truly do this. This is, uh, ooh, this could get a little awkward. Who sees who first? And Kiyomi just lets rip. He does get the tag, but nothing more to follow. Nade goes down from Kyo, and we all reset and take a breath. Two Molotovs in a drop zone. One play. I mean, this is this is really ballsy from Astralis, considering the amount of attention that the B-bomb set has gotten from FaZe. They, they only keep two players here at the moment. They're positioned for an A hit. It's not coming, but that's a sick flashbang from a teammate. Nice work from Astralis. Zipnix. Beautiful timing on that. As soon as that molly got extinguished by the smoke, you saw the flash come in, but it's only a one-man advantage for now. And there's still players only on pistols for Astralis, so this isn't a clear-cut round just yet. And look who's lurking around. It's Nico. This stack is everything. And Zipnix is watching drop, and he's got only a pistol. Now he's got the F4, but Nico wins that. Kerrigan and Nico chime in for two kills, and this is where that gamble towards A doesn't pay off. You see that Nico puts himself in such tough positions, but he plays them so well, and when he wins that territory, you can see what it opens up for FaZe here. Yeah, I, I don't even think Astralis can go for this even if they wanted to. Three to ten. Yeah, they're just going to try and get some rifles for the last round. This has been a huge first half from FaZe. No one expected to see this level of dominance except for perhaps FaZe themselves. Yeah, they were very confident, clearly, and you can see as to why. It makes perfect sense now, but it's normally that kind of bluff, isn't it? It's that, no, don't worry, we, we'll have them next time around. We had a plan all along and no one really believes them, but now... Hey, we do. Device there. Going to take a gun away from Rain, but... Alu? Being put on notice. He's got Carrigan to back him up now. Yeah, I don't think there's any way Device gets this gun. He would love to have it, but I think he's almost got to go for more kills. And actually, he's going to drop down. He actually, that's that's really good communication from teammates. Gun down and drop. So they do bring an AK-47 to bear into the next round, and he's even going to drop a UMP to a teammate. Huge find for Device. Yeah, well, Kerrigan walked up to us on his way to the stage, and he did the whole alligator mouth of, like, the trap closing. Yeah. Slapped his hands together. 
He's not wrong so far. Uh, 11 to 3, FaZe come into this and maybe want to string together what happened not too long ago in that Star Ladder event over in Kiev. That looked like, you know, it was a back and forth until that point, but this could be where they start stringing together the victories where it turns into a bit of a FaZe dominance, but it's the first map in a best of three, but this looks very decisive. Nico tries to find a bit of a cheeky way through and Glaive's not having it. It's been about the only one to really hinder them, but look at the progress FaZe have made elsewhere. They've got the A site under wraps. Kiev, he tries to get there as fast as he can and takes so much damage, he gives away his position. There's absolutely no wins here. Look at this, the floor is on fire. Device finds some respite, but Carrigan takes down Kiebi. You put that out, your position is noted. You can't escape this phase. This was the try there. This was the play we were looking for that whole half. When they were they just gonna go fast paced towards the A-bomb site. They set it up so nicely that it comes out of the very, very last round. And they take the site with ease. Smokes and Molotovs and all the choke points. I mean, no one from Astralis could even rotate if they wanted to. Alu's watching for that. Molotov is gonna force him away. There's just so many bodies that Astralis have to get through, and Kerrigan lurking underneath the balcony is going to find Glaive, and this is it. They've got to go now, and they've got to go fast, and they need to win everything, and it's just not happening. You're not going to get a look into this one, it feels. Device gets sent back, and it's Kerrigan that time with four kills. The, the first major they attended with him, uh, FaZe actually improved massively as a team ever since Kerrigan joined, and it was immediate. Now, this looks a lot like the pistol we saw out of Astralis in the first game during the groups. They make a lot of noise by A, they try and take over by Danger, and then they'll fall away to B. Now, last time FaZe fell for this hook, line, and sinker. This time, look how passive they are. Yeah, very, very far, far back. Rain watching for anything is in mid. He hasn't seen anything come through those double doors, and I don't think he will. Device is gonna rotate all the way around the long way, and it's Kiyoshima and Nico. That's to where this battle is basically gonna be won or lost. So Two players on the platform. And Kerrigan. If I was him right now, and you're seeing the timing, you're hearing the hit, you are grinning ear to ear, as long as you hold in the next couple of seconds, and it's gonna be Nico who can do everything. No! What was that? Yeah, he just overwhelms him, and it's Rain and Carrigan, the only ones to do any damage back for FaZe thus far. The bomb yet to cross over, this is still problematic, but Rain is digging them out of this sticky situation, it's just Kiebi left. 1v3, and it's not looking easy either. Oh god, you thought Nico was gonna have so many kills there. Kiyoshima trying to bait for him as well as possible. They don't do anything. I thought that was going to be where the main battle where it was won or lost, and it doesn't happen because Rain and Alu are amazing, and Kirby, he's got to do it all. One on three, brought into a one on two. Trying to land the shots. Four bullets left. That's Alu out in the open. That's a misplay. Ten shots. That's all he's got. Nine, eight, seven, six. He's got oh, nothing left. Rain! Punched him out of his misery in the end and holds his nerve. And FaZe get the important round beginning in the second half here. Now look at that scoreline. 13 to 3. This has been a stunning performance from FaZe to open this up. We saw Kerrigan loving it at the end of the first half. Astralis, they go all in again on this second round. Three smokes, one flashbang, and it's just pistols and armor. Astralis will be eating a little bit of humble pie, I can imagine, after uh, thinking they had the complete upper hand coming to Yeah, bubble. I think so. And I guess I will never doubt Kerrigan's word again. He was grinning ear to ear earlier today, and there's a good reason why. We didn't see that T side in the group stage. He even said it in the interview, you know, it was great for us to try it there. We won that engagement despite losing the match because it didn't mean anything. Yeah, something about, you know, winning the battle, losing the battle, winning the war, I think yeah. might just apply to this down yeah, the line. We'll so. see, though. There's still two possible maps to go, but this one is waving that phase banner pretty darn high. And so far, let's look at what Astralis are up to this round. It looks like, again, a bit of a fact-finding mission, and they're not finding out much here. FaZe really are not playing into their hands at all. Yeah, I mean, they have all the advantage in this and they know it. So I mean, it's kind of just like, we, we need to make Astralis execute and us. Don't give up the mistake. Crossfire here in drop zone. Zipnix is looking for it, but not in time. Alu close up. There's no one baiting for him, though, so it's a little bit dangerous. And he's going to go hunting for information. He's got device just kind of paused there, so takes an off angle. Still, FaZe has no idea what's coming quite yet. Advantage for Astralis in that sense, but can they actually win off the top of it? There's some information, and there goes Rain. Alu has to stay aggressive over towards Halls. He's gonna win that battle. He's gotta stay alive, but he just can't do it. He's not prepared for it to be that aggressive, and Kerrigan can't get anything done. Astralis overrun the defense, and they've got another round. A lifeline at this point as well for the Astralis guys. A desperately needed one. They're very much teetering on the edge of a disastrous scoreline, but Kyo and Nico. Not really a much threat unless they decide to push any further themselves. They can back away with what they have. A retake is looking very unlikely, and neither have a kit beside them either. No, this is just back away. You have the two UMPs. 
save him in for the next round, exactly what's happening. Keo, I'm not sure why he's still so close up. I think he might just be afraid uh, to try and run. Doesn't have a kit, so can't go for any sort of trick play, but he's certainly going to blow up if he sticks around. So just now starting to slide off. And he'll get away perfectly fine. So Astralis, they turn the tables in the second round of this second half. It's going to be 4-13. to 13. Well, the mountain to climb might begin. My, <laughs> I don't want to... Begins don't with even, one step, right? Yeah, I, I guess you can put it that way. I want to see the gun round come in. I want to see more than this. This is not enough yet from Astralis because FaZe haven't yet been even properly tested on this CT side. Their T side, though, looked magnificent. That, to me, was absolutely outstanding. Now, though, we've got Deagles, P250s, CZs, UMPs. It's not what you want to be working with, but with these guys on the other side of them, they, they can get it done. Yeah, exactly. And remember as well, I mean, last round it was Rain had what either a UMP or, or a rifle, and he was dropped by one shot from the Deagle at range. So that, that's what really opened up that A bomb site. Same thing can happen here. Alu on device, and it's going to be won by device. A couple missed shots there from Alu could have turned the t tide in that fight. Not going to happen though. Astralis has the pick. They have the one kill they want. And now it's readjust. Well, Rain's still playing pretty close, and he hasn't actually given away much of a Keo and ooh, I was going to say Kerrigan, but that's a very quick pickup. But that actually might even play in Rain and Keo a little more here, because they might feel they've taken down the two possible opponents there, but still no real commitment from Astralis. Sure, they are towards A, but they, they've just hit the brakes. Uh, this is where they thrive. This is what makes Astralis so dangerous. This is exactly what they like to do. They get that first kill and they back off just a little bit and then pause. They want to punish the information plays, and that's exactly what Dupree just did there. So FaZe has got to be careful if they do lose a man. You know that's exactly what they're looking for. This is interesting. You can see the Kyo and Rain are reading into what's been shown and what's being displayed, that it might be a B hit, there might be pressure towards drop. This is pretty smart though. Device 11 HP, I mean, he's not, not necessarily dead, but use him to get information, right? Use him to push into the B site, see what's there. He's the least, uh, the, uh, the most expendable player you have on your team. This is perfect. Eyes towards Dupree and Glaive. That's beautiful from Nico, but the bomb is encroaching towards A as we speak, and Kyo and Rain have just realized as well. They've seen it all, they've read the play, but can they do anything to stop it? Rain dives out, Kyo makes noise, and Rain looks for the frag, he can't find it. Dupree does best him, but it's 14 seconds, and the bomb should be able to go down completely unchallenged. Yeah, I mean, good, good on them for reading the play, but it was just a second too late, right? If they've been able to get both players out, then maybe you can mount some kind of defense to slow them down. Astralis just had him beat by a couple steps. Question is, how much do, does Astralis want to commit to take this UMP, this Deagle, away from Nico? I mean, still very deadly weapons in their hands, and you can afford to maybe send Zitmix on a hunting mission to try and take at least one of them out. See how far he can get. Keo does seem a little slippery at times, though. He completely missed him last time. Oh! Nico! It, I guess it doesn't really matter to how this round pans out, but the man's got pretty sick aim. I'm not going to lie to you, and now Keo's fan plays, and this just gets a little bit unnerving. They don't, they don't have any chance of winning the round, but it's, you know, it's got a little bit more expensive than intended. Yeah, uh, that's, yeah. that's rough. <laughs> what a shot from Nico. The things we've come to love. God. Even brings uh, an SMG into this round, tosses it over to a teammate as well. So still has that Deagle, still has a kit as well. That's pretty big. Yeah, that's Dirty, cool. isn't it? Yep. Oh, and Zipnix hasn't had a great game for a player that's been huge for this team in recent memory. I mean, one of the, obviously, one of the smartest players we have in terms of his in-game, his game sense. Hugely clutch. He's only 4 and 16 at the moment. That's really, really rough. This is a great read, actually, from FaZe as well. They do only have a couple of pistols, and they do have the UMP on Keo, but outside of that, they've gone for the stack towards Danger and, you know, a little bit towards Long, and we know that Astralis like to get that kind of real estate, get that map control in their favor. And then they hit the brakes a couple of times, and they'll use it as their pivot point. But this is a nice stack. Whether it works out or not, we're going to find out right now. Rain, going to get the first bit of contact, baits the shot. Pulls back in. He's got to stay alive, though. This is all for Kiyoshima. There it is. There's the pounce. Kiyo gets one, and he gets the other as well. But great trades from Astralis. Alu is still here, though, and I don't think they realize it. No, the bomb's quite far back, too. So it's not like Astralis can springboard anywhere from this, even if they wanted to. They still need to kind of take their time. Glaive instantly considers, well, what if B was open? What if someone's been working their way through? They have no information on the rest of the map. This is it. Yeah, this round for FaZe has to be about getting Nico into the proper position, and unfortunately, they don't have any intel. They basically need to find a way to rotate him into the right spot with that Deagle to get some kills, get at least one. Alu close up, though. This is a big fight for the outcome of this round. He looks away at the wrong moment. He gets the dink, but it's not going to get the kill, and Nico's just too far away. So Astralis, they're going to get through this. Tested, but they don't fail. Oh. Dupree's low. Zipnix is low. 
but playing back into a 1v3, you need other players to make mistakes to allow you opportunities. Yeah, this is about take a gun away. You can hear the crowd wants it. They love it. Dupree. It's so close. Nico's found him, but it's returned the favor. Keo laughing a little bit there. <laughs> Just going to shake it off. They stu still are sitting at 13 to 6. So as much as this still looks good for Astros, we haven't seen that really nice full buy, I feel, from FaZe yet. Nice slow-mo sound. That was um, great, wasn't it? <laughs> but it's Alu now on the orb. We've got a decent buy. It's not great. I guess Carrigan is fine on the UMP. OK, can we get off the screen? Cool. But we do have both orbs now coming in. So this is this is the battle we want to see. Both teams can afford what they need to forge this battle. This can define everything. If Astralis get this, OK, game back on. If it's FaZe, you're going to see them probably grind out towards the end. And look at the difference in this first gun round. FaZe is everything. They have the Molotovs to slow down all those hits. Astralis can't come through it. They even have the smoke set up for it, but nothing going. They cannot control platform. Kerrigan, we've talked about, oh, Lalu just barely misses that. And actually, it's going to be a repeat, but the flick is too fast. Device, usually one of those players who will give up that fight. And he'll, you know, he'll just see it and he'll say, okay, I'll find, I'll find something elsewhere. He's not one of those offers that you consider to, to peek into others. He doesn't like those duels. This time, though, he goes for it and is punished. You've got to think how frustrating it must be. You're sat there, you're not having the biggest biggest of games ever against your ex-teammate on a map that you guys walked into, that you assumed you had the upper hand on. Maybe a little bit flustered individually, but maybe not. Maybe just a small error in one round. I guess we can give him that, even though he's Mr. Consistent normally. But still, FaZe barely moving a muscle. Look at this, the line across the map. As slowly as Stralis try and find a way into this, but FaZe aren't giving them anything. No, and actually, this all, I mean, when is Nico going to get this spot? How early is it going to be? There's a smoke out. That's going to be huge. It's going to delay him so nice. He can play behind that, but actually, he can't. Zipnik sprays through. Now the rotations are on. Now Kiyoshima, the weight of this round is on him. He's got great positioning. He's got Kerrigan as well to help him out, but they don't have enough eyes on drop for him to commit to that. Oh, they going back to the Kyo. Only good for one. And Glaive, that's the important one. Carrington going down means the site is now Astralis's. But Rain's going to play right back in. The bomb's yet to go over. This could be a massive error. Rain can absolutely destroy this round. Seven seconds. They do not have a bomb plant. But Glaive secures it at the very end. That could have been so problematic. Yeah, tough. I think they win that if Alu's not in drop zone. That's yep. such a tough call to read if you're Alu. It's so, it's so difficult in the heat of that moment to realize the time and the kill that comes in. Almost from phase. It's that spray from Zipnix. That smoke comes out from Nico. If he's able to get behind that, I don't think Astralis wins that round. No, I'm, I'm in 100% agreement with you. And now we're going to see phase having to go through what Astralis felt. That money constantly being broken down at the moment. Now, they are dangerous. There is, you know, everyone knows what Nico can do with the Deagle. There's no need to have to reiterate that every time. But this should be a cleaner round for Astralis. And they need to start building their own money up as well. These have been pretty close rounds considering. It's Keo again trying to play close towards that broken ledge over by the plateau. Nico finds his first possible victim. Keo plays it in well. Dupree goes, but a good trade from Device. Now Nico waits ever so patiently. And this time, the Viper can't strike. Yeah, and it's tough. I mean, Keo has to get aggressive there once drop is lost. Great play from Astralis patiently, and then both prongs of that attack pouncing at the same time. Another buy up from Astralis, but. This is good utility. This is one thing that even Astralis didn't necessarily have on their buys on the CT side, is when they have these rifles. Yeah, sure, Alu's missing a lot, but Kerrigan Rain. Ooh. Okay, there's the switch up. Double op setup coming out. Now, this is nice. Nico on one and Alu on one. So, we're going to split this apart. I can imagine Alu over by A, Nico as per usual over by B. And I wonder if Astralis are even going to consider this being an option yet. Of course, if you're phase, you want to bring out you know, your A game. You want to find every opportunity you can. Now, Keo can be playing up close towards platform, and look at this. Oh, my word. The ball's on Nico right now to go for this sort of play, and I think they did this before, and it worked out last time, but a little bit of pre fire coming in from Zipnix, and Alu going to find Kievi. That's a big start for FaZe here. Yeah, big job from Alu there. Two picks. He's fouled, and the double up setup works perfectly. Zipnix goes for a peek, not prepared for that. Five on three. FaZe, they need to get out of this round. This is too big of an advantage to give up, but if any team's going to do it, it's going to be Astralis. Bomb is on Glaive. He's alone towards the A bomb site. So the pre and device must come back to him. And this time, I mean, it might just force his device's hand. Mention the fact that he's not an opera known to generally duel against others. He might just have to this time. We'll, we'll see how he fares this time against Alu last time. And quick as lightning. But will it strike twice? Alu waiting on the very corner here. Glaive waiting to Vice to come and help him out. If they make a single step and make a single noise, give any advantage over, Alu will not miss.
centimeters apart. Glaive gets tagged. Who will be the first to fall? Alu has gone for it, and no device gets the chance. Patience is his virtue, and I guess it'll work out for him this time. It's a 4v3, though. It's still not looking good for Astralis. It's 23 seconds, but Dupree's gonna find Rain, and oh my god, he's found Kerrigan. Where have these kills come from? This is, oh, that's unreal. Nice shot from Nico. That's Glaive down, but Device is still up. This is where he thrives. He's got positioning. So consistent in hitting these shots. Rough game so far, but this is where he can pick it all back up. He just has to hold the cross, and it sounds simple, but it might not be now. Keo's found Dupree, and now the cross begins. Keo makes good progress. A little peek here and there, but now Device knows he's going to be challenged. It's Nico, and they both miss the Device. He's done it. He does it all. He gets past Alu. Dupree chimes in and the close comes out from Device and this game is now on, it's 9 to 13. You thought those double orbs would have worked for FaZe, but just in those final seconds, Astralis turned it back around. This is incredible stuff from Device, huge one on two to win, holds his nerve. And Nico, he's just not quick enough there on the peak to trade that, as well with the AWP, just misses the shot. I mean, these previous two rounds, though, first it's Nico getting picked off through the smoke to decide everything, and then this time it's the patience from Alu slipping at a critical moment. Did not need to go for that peak whatsoever, but he felt the pressure. He knew Rain had spotted some down mid, and he tries to go for a little bit too much. You can start to see the composure from FaZe cracking a little bit here, and that's why this timeout is called. This begins the test of what depth they have to bring. What what can FaZe do? We've seen the look they brought out with the double orb. It looked good for a little while, but you saw the depth that Astralis can bring when it comes to those moments to dig them out of those situations. But it is a back and, back and forth game, and FaZe still have a great deal of rounds beside them. So it's certainly not hugely problematic. Yet. It's certainly going to be a little bit of a worry building when you've uh, barely made a scratch on the CT side, but you, you hold your nerve here. Zipnix starting to tend towards drop, as we do see. Astralis begin this hit, but it's a 4-1 play going out for FaZe, so they've got a lot of bodies over by the B side. Yeah, barely made a scratch is a good way to put it. FaZe wins pissed around in this half, and that's the only round they have. It's been six straight for Astralis. This has been just as dominating of a T side. FaZe have got to be a little bit worried. Still, no one getting lured into any kind of a peak right now. Astralis just slowly gaining map control, as they usually do. Zipnix leading the way. Alu's gonna be his first test, but his teammates pop flash blinds him, and that allows Alu to win the fight. Five on four. We just saw a five on three lost by FaZe in the previous round, so now they've gotta rotate. They've gotta get in a position. They have the good read as well. Two players sliding over. One's Alu, though, and he's, he's deadly injured. He is, but that recovered rifle now sits in the hands of Kyo, who has joined them on the A site. Oh, that's some damage coming in. This is actually really problematic, but it's all Alu. The ace of the sleeve. Will they check for it? Will they not? Will they commit? Nico's now over. Carrigan now over as well. And they're down to 26 seconds. They have to go pretty darn soon, and they've got a long challenge to run. Carrigan finds one. This is still hugely problematic. If Nico can do something else, no, it's down to 17 seconds, and the bomb is off. It's in Glaive's hands, and Kirby now just has to watch his back. Astralis turn it on a dime, but that was very close. What a sick call to go through those double doors, meeting so much resistance, and that's the thing. You thought for a moment that Nico would be able to provide enough of a bait so that the back of the bombsite wouldn't get checked, but Astralis just circumvents the entire idea, don't they? That is gutsy with that much time left on the clock. 13 to 10, another buy coming up for FaZe. This time it's not the double up, though. It worked so good the first time around, but they couldn't close that. Back to just Alu. Twenty-three kills for Glaive, leading the way for Astralis in this, as well as leading. Made some very, very good calls so far in this half. Seven straight now for Astralis on the T side. An excellent in-game leader as well, and you can perform to this ability and still. Well, the, Astralis is one of the few teams that has that luxury, right? Where, where Glaive can just pick up the slack. Glaive can just hard carry himself. Well, this is another incredible test between these two. The first exchanges go down into Alu again, finding Kiebi. That's. A very big start. I'm not sure if it was for free almost without smoke, but however you get it, you're going to be happy with it. you got to feel so bad for him at a certain point just because he's had three of the opening picks. He's done everything you want your offer to do. He's had three opening kills. Look at this aggression. Kyo, he's got a note of freeze here. He's running out of bullets, though. Too much spam. Another individual mistake. Neo trying to get it, and he does. He makes up for it. They find the kill anyway. Just got to be very careful. Peeking back into the Zop from Device. We've seen Device in these situations in man disadvantaged. He's the one kill that decides it for Astralis. 
Can he have impact again here in this round? This time it'll be Alu and Rain towards A for now. Now Alu's going all the way over towards the balcony. Rain's playing incredibly passive, so the hit will come in and they will get pretty far towards the side, but the stopping power is there and it's in the hands of Alu as we speak. You can see that Molly's starting to burn. He's down to 34, forced to be Gary. He spots one, but he can't get the shot off. One HP, a quick flash might do the job. He might be able to play back into this, but it's Device on the other side and it's not going to be much longer. Kerrigan's there, 10 seconds now on the clock. Zipnix needs to get to the side and oh, they check for a glaive. Beautiful mentality time. Just gets the bomb down with a second remaining, but it's still Nico. Do not write him out of these situations. He's gonna find a little bit of fire coming through first. Zimnik's on the side, Glaive to the left. He's got the tag on the first, but the frag not to follow just yet. The second challenger comes in, but he holds his nerve. I think he's gonna concede this round. I think he's gonna get the AWP and just try and bail out. The AWP is down. Oh no, can't hit that shot. Can't clean out Zipnix. This is getting scary now for FaZe. Another tactical pause coming in for Kerrigan. And again, they seem to have players in the right positions. It's missed shots down here at the stretch. That was such a big thing that Kerrigan was able to harp on in the pregame is that he said, whoever's going to be hitting their shots, that's what we need to do. And for someone who said they have the most skilled lineup here down the stretch, that skill is failing them. It's not enough. Well, we saw it in the first half. There's no denying that. We saw the rain in the pistol round went completely yeah. off. Excuse me, Alu in the pistol round. Then rain came in on the gun round, and we saw Nico doing the same thing. There was a lot of those moments. It just seems to not come through on the CT side just yet, but still, this is getting very, very close. 11 to 13, it, it felt like this was almost over the half, especially when the pistol came in especially as well. Especially when the pistol was won, this would be a massive comeback for Astralis. God, and what a test for Carrigan. Such confidence coming into this, and it all seemed right to be so. But truly, grit and determination feels to sit by Astralis. You look at that scoreline, a lot of teams mentally would probably, not necessarily check out, but you don't feel you've got that favor, do you? It seems they've got some good strength here. The great thing about this comeback from Astralis, what makes it even more impressive, is this isn't a situation where they've just been winning so many low buys. FaZe is playing a very good game in terms of their economy with the, with the losing bonus built up. It's just these small half buys so they can have everything they need come to gun rounds. Astralis has had to win every single gun round against Alu with an AWP, against Molotovs in the hands. And Kree's gonna get caught out here. Device is here to shore it up. Kerrigan almost makes that scary for him, but it's not gonna happen. And the stack over towards the A bomb site, the gamble is lost. Uh, the th the three-man hit squad, though, is pretty close by, actually. They've rotated incredibly fast to Rain. He's not going to miss it. Finds one. Alu finds Device. What a disaster. It's fallen apart for Astralis. What a brilliant moment of a turn for FaZe. Yeah, but Kerby is in a very, very good position. Likely wins this round for Astralis because FaZe feels like they're in it. They're going to go for this. They've all got rifles as well. Why not? Why not come back around for this? Kerby has to deny it before it begins. He gets one, but he can't handle the second. Game back on, and it's all on you, Glaive. And you can't do it. Rain! Cometh the hour, cometh the man. Three kills to deliver them from Astralis being right on their doorstep. That's stunning. Kerby had such good positioning. It's that, that weird route Kerrigan takes coming into the door. Kerby saw his shoulder but couldn't get a clean shot. That's what allows FaZe to trade that kill. That's huge. And they have been stuck on just one round in the second half. They only won pistol, and again, it's another round with pistols that they pull out. They have to do it with guns, though. This is interesting as well. Another switch up. No double op set up here, but it's Nico who's got the op. It's Alu who doesn't towards the A bomb site. That op is actually positioned. It is so at A, coop. but it is at mid. No, it's at. So by Chicken Coop right now with Nico. Yeah. Very far back, very passive. First time we're seeing this incredibly passive approach from at least the author. Nico, last time we saw him, what, up and drop, looking for the face. So nice. a real bit of a mirror image here, but up close is Keo. Now. More than good for a one-for-one. One. We know what he can do. And I think Astralis do as well by this point. It's going to come down towards timing because this is going to be a delayed peak from Nico. And he's going to smoke deep. He's going to try and smoke out Device, but I think Device is going to be in front of it. This is a danger moment. There's got to be a flashbang for this peak, and it, I don't think it misses. I think it misses. There's the pressure from Kiyoshima. Oh, he's going to jump over. He's going to get debris. And there's Nico on a Device. He goes for the re-peak. That's huge. Can they do more with this? But look at these positionings, it's so awkward. Alu continues to win. Glaive has found himself in a great spot, but he can't do anything. Zimnik still has to get past two on either side that he pushes. 35 seconds to do it. One molly goes in to clear the left, but he has to take the challenge on the right. He has no other options right now. First man to face will be Rain. He gets past the first challenger. Second 
will be Alu. Glaive now wants to help out, and he's going to help him. Spots him out, the push comes in. The tag comes up, but Zimnik still needs to get this frag. There it is! Glaive gets it, and we're down to a 2v2. This is brilliant stuff, but 14 seconds, and Kyo and Nico are closing in. Oh no, that's awkward. Glaive cut out in the open, but Kyo runs out of bullets! Oh no, Glaive's going to get away. Still a 2-1-2. Two -two. Kyo can't land the shots. Now Nico has arrived for the backup. All right, Zimnix waits patiently on the site for his first challenger. Glaive repositions as best he can here. You can hear that all rattling on Kyo. Wants to fight, he loses it, Zimnix. This is the man we were waiting for. The clutch got himself, but Nico, what do you have for us? What can you bring? Can you take phase to 15 rounds here? He taps the bomb. He looks for the fight, he gets the first. He sprays on the second, but the volley comes in. He knows he got to it. Oh, he wins it, but it's not enough. No time. It's over. It's done with Astralis. Survive again. Just barely. Astralis is hanging on in this match. And the response. It all came down. Keo had it. And he runs out of bullets. That's going to be heartbreaking. A fortunate Molotov there at the end. Glaive again with the heroics. What was that situation? In it? Was it like a 2v4, was it? Yes, I mean, this, this is, they have had such good positioning, and the crazy thing is, at the end of that, it was, you know, Glaive had that spot in the connector, and, and he, I think his spot was known. Always seemed to know he was there, but yeah. it was, I think it was Zipnix in the middle who had to make that play to, to really make the positioning of Glaive, like, be Viable. fully efficient. Yeah, he couldn't do anything. He was kind of stuck there, no, no idea where he was going to go. God, what a game we've had so far. I thought this was going to be a little one-sided. I'm not going to lie to you after that first half. I was like, yeah. you know what? It's done. These two never fail to deliver, it feels. There's the tough part. I mean, this is, this is the crazy thing, because FaZe has had the luxury of having the full losing bonus this entire half, essentially. I mean, you call that a luxury. You obviously don't want to have that situation, but, I mean, it made their buys so clean and so nice whenever they did invest for the, for the rifles and the ADWP. Now they don't. Now that's hard reset. They're going to have a good buy in the next round, even with these shotguns that UMP brought up, because they did win that eco, but they've got to start that all over again. It's a slow, meticulous grind for FaZe, and they don't have that many rounds now in the pocket. Before, they had a good few, but Astralis is going to quicken the pace, and I like this. I like a lot of teams who do these A hits. We'll see how diligent this is, though, for FaZe, as they're trying to play back into it. Kerrigan thought he maybe had an angle there. Wasn't to be. Alu, range, it's not on your side, and you know it for once. Normally, with the AWP to hand, it feels a little better, but right through the smoke, Nico will find the vice and goes in for another, but this time, Alu finds Dupree. What is going on here? How are they losing out on this? Oh, to pre or, I mean, Alu's so smart, goes and wraps around. Zipnix is gonna hold this up. I think this is the end of Alu here. Yes, it is, but he does get dinked. That's good damage done. AK in the hands of Nico. Rain as well with the UMP. They're gonna come through Kirby, taking a little bit of damage. More spam from Nico, and the fire also burning. And there's Rain. He's gonna swing out. They need to find Kirby, and he is. The bomb site is open, but Zipnix is there to close it down. But Glaive gets spammed. Zipnix, can the Volotov win it again? You've gotta see. It's on the bomb right now. Bomb still ticking. Rain goes hunting. Nico is burning alive as we speak. 20 HP left on him. He's burned alive! Zipnix! He might have just done this. He has! Rain has to go head down. Tail between the legs. As again, Zipnix. We asked where this man was before. And the clutches are coming through thick and fast now. I don't know if he would have had that. There is going to be, someone is gonna look that up and find out the timing of it. I think Nico felt like he had to risk it in the flames. That is heartbreaking. So many close rounds, but I mean, this is so, so interesting to see is that even with the Strauss winning all these, look at their economy because of all these clutches. It's so interesting, FaZe actually has the better buy in this round. Molotov nade to try and slow things out. Device is gonna get across the, oh no, Kiyoshima. Tapping away, Device is down. Another man advantage situation for FaZe. They have got to start converting these. FaZe are not letting this go. Both hands gripping on for dear life to this game. They fought so damn hard to get to this point, to retain that crown that they so rightly deserved. And now Keo takes up a slightly further advanced position there. Might have to be careful, the smoke will dissipate. Three players waiting on the go, but Kievi, Looking for possibilities over by A. Still so much to be played for in this round. Still so much information to find. Kerrigan hears all this. I don't think he wants to challenge too much knowing they have a man advantage. They just need to keep their eyes on that other window. Both the exits towards drop rooms. Zipnix inside is going to be able to lurk. 
Shima, how much how aggressive does he want to be? Smokes there, Molotov forces him back. Nico's gonna peer in, but Kerrigan gets the kill at the OP. Oh, Kiyoshima saves Nico perhaps. Dupree finally chiming in. Kiyo for more? He can't get it. But the rotation is here. Kerrigan's still alive and Alu with the AWP. The true test for this bomb site is now beginning. Great flash actually denied Alu the angle, but not gonna do, not gonna miss it for the second time. And now Dupree only has the UMP. He does have two kills, but these three players in front of him, they won that 15 rounds, and they won it right about now. Noise of plenty, trying to bait him in, but he knows that this clock is just not on his side. Nine seconds. I think he knows this one is done for. He's gonna try and make it away, draw them in. Kerrigan takes the fight and wins it. It's 15 for FaZe. One more round, and this map is theirs. And this might be it. The Astralis backs against the wall. The money is finally out. All those rounds that FaZe was able to get so close and not able to come on top has chipped away at the economy. It's going to be two Tech Nines. A UMP has bought so far, mostly pistols. FaZe has done it. They've got the advantage in this. But remember, this was a situation Astralis was in in Atlanta at the last major against Virtus Pro. Low buy in the championship, and they made it work. The tactical timeout just about to run out. Now, FaZe, as you highlighted, they've got everything. They've got it all. They've got every piece of utility. They've got orbs. If they want it, they've got whatever they need. And Astralis, on the other hand, are scraping it together. The match has been unpaused. We'll be getting this one started any second now. Will it be FaZe getting that first step in the right direction as best of three? Or Astralis claim back what could be their build back in towards this matchup head to head? Bear in mind they lost last time. Now it's time to find out right now how much does it has Astralis got to bring into this round? Or is it FaZe closing out right about now? Rain could be the one to do it all. Oh yeah, he could be the one to lose it all as well. This is fast paced. There's a headshot. Oh, he gets the second and the third. Sprays them all down. Rain wants that 16th and they're gonna get it. A one on five. Heavy play towards Halls goes nowhere. It was Rain in the first half who had a stellar